They're ready to rock and roll here. We'll get started with uh, a question from Warren Williamson from Oregon Duck Football News. Solid, solid. Varun, good to see you again. Glad you're back. Um, I was curious, this defense has changed quite a bit considering the losses and um, the opt-outs. What is the biggest strength, not just of the secondary, but of this defense as a whole as you as you begin in, into fall camp here? Um, I would say that just being able to talk to each other, having that com camaraderie off the field would probably be our biggest our biggest thing. Um, with a lot going on, we had to keep in, keep in contact with each other just through FaceTime and Zoom and texting each other, making sure everybody's good. So I think having that chemistry off the field is going to help us a lot on the field. Next question from Max Torres of Scoop Duck. Hey there, Varone. Uh, yeah, you know, coming back this year, you guys were one of the top defenses in the country last year. Uh, you know, as we've mentioned with the opt-outs, could be a bit of a different look this year. Uh, what kind of a defense in an ideal world are you guys looking to be this year, would you say? Um, I would say we're, we're picking up to be better than the defense uh, from last year. Um, we, we fly around, we have fun, we make plays, we communicate. And, I mean, we're just ready to have fun. We got another opportunity to play football, so we're all looking forward to it. Next question from A.J. Jacobson of Rivals. Hey, Verone, good to see you. Um, you know, suddenly as a sophomore, you are one of the veterans of the, uh, of the secondary here. So kind of as one of the veteran voices, kind of tell me what the mood was when you found out. You, I mean, it was no huge surprise that some of these defensive backs opted out for the NFL draft, but what was the mood of the de defensive backfield and what is it now going forward when you've had to regroup with the people you have? The mood was uh, we're, we're all ready to go. We all practice the same. We all get the same same concepts. We, we understand everything. So it was like next man up, no matter what happens, we all got to be ready to play. We all are ready to have fun. We were excited. We got the news. We were excited. Everybody was locked in and excited to play football again. Next question is from Tyson Alger of The Athletic. Hey, Brown. Uh, your Twitter account's been pretty fun to follow on Saturdays and Sundays with just like the football breakdown. Like just one, like what's it been like having that much access to, you know, watching, watching games and then but can, can you tell me a little bit about like what like is it elite media that you're you're doing stuff with like like yes sir um well since we weren't playing at the time and just throughout quarantine and all of that i've been watching a lot of film from the nfl to college and just watching a lot of film just so i can strengthen my mind and get better and better even though we're not playing because it's hard to it's hard to get better when you're actually not playing so elite media is a group it's just a group of journalists and some athletes are in it in the nfl nba and just, it's, I mean, we want to bring everything from culture, lifestyle, sports, but my particular area is more towards the football side. And of course, I have the podcast called Check Fade and just, you know, just learning to get better. I know I'm not in the NFL, so like, yeah, I critique those guys. And I mean, it's just to get better because concepts are pretty much the same. We run a lot of things here at Oregon that are seen in the NFL. So there's some they could do better, whether that was they could hinge at the top of the route or they could play their hands through somewhere else. So just little things like that and just trying to strengthen my mind. That's all. How did you get involved with them? Um, it was somebody. I actually have a friend. He's just – he's close with a lot of these guys. He's built a lot of contacts to where he goes to school. And uh, he sees a lot of my tweets just from from just my Twitter. And we've been friends since freshman year of high school. So he's like, I'm going to put you in this, see if you kind of fit and see how it goes. And we just hit it off from there. And that's when kind of the brand started building. Next question is from James Krapia from the Oregonian. We're on a, a lot of the uh, secondary changes, but especially on the field side where you're at, one, do you feel uh, a preference or more comfortable at either field safety or nickel? And, and regardless of which one you're at, what is the change? Because Javon and Thomas aren't there. So, like I say, that, that side of the secondary really did change more than the boundary. Um, well, for me, preference wise, I, it doesn't matter to me. I just, I just want to be on the field and able to make plays. But I mean, we have guys like Jamal Hill, Mike Hill, Bennett. We have a lot of guys that can play all of those positions. So I wouldn't say there's just a big drop off. Those guys have been ready. We, we all study the same thing. We practice the same way. So everybody's ready to go. The thing between nickel and free safety, they're interchangeable. So if you're able to play free safety, you're able to play nickel. And for somebody like me who wants to know everything, I know that corner spot. I know the nickel spot. I know the free safety. And you got to know where your help is and who's doing what. Everything, it's like a puzzle. Defense is like a puzzle. So being able to put pieces together is what makes up the puzzle. Next question's from Matt Prem of 247 Sports. 
Hey, bro. Uh, your freshman year, you, you played in the nickel, and then you made the switch just before Auburn last year, and you said it yourself, you know, all the other positions, you're maybe one of the most versatile guys in the secondary. What's the best spot for you? What, what's Where do you feel the most comfortable right now? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I like the nickel a lot just because you get to cover so much and you get to blitz and everything. But I also like free safety because I feel more like a quarterback. I feel like I get to quarterback the defense more. I get to talk to the boundary side. I get to talk to the D-line. I talk to the linebackers. So it gives me more freedom to to be vocal. I like to really be vocal and make sure everybody's on the same page because for this defense, the sky, the sky isn't even the limit. It's more than that. And as long as we're on the same page, it, it's hard for us to be beat, I feel like. Next question is from Eric Scopel of 247 Sports. Hey, Verone, I know you and Javon are really close personally. I wonder that decision that he made, how that affected you personally and kind of what it's like not having him around practice and, and, and the building and everything right now. Um, so I had been talking to Javon beforehand, even before he made his decision and everything, and I supported whatever he wanted to do. I understand what he, the decision he made. And, of course, I, that's one of my best friends. I, I love playing with him this past year. It was so much fun. But I understood what he had to do, and we had a conversation, and he was just saying, it's time for you to step up. I expect to see you right behind me one to two years later. And he says the same thing. So just stepping up, understand that I got to step into a leadership role and really make sure I pick up my teammates and pick up my communication and my energy at practice and kind of be one of those leaders. So next question is from Ryan Thorburn from the Register Guard. Jerome, can you kind of describe what your range of emotions has been over the last four or five months from, you know, losing the Ohio State game, having an abbreviated season, uh, having that postponed. I mean, did you ever lose hope that you guys would be on the field in 2020? Um, I, I mean, it was tough. I understood kind of what they were looking for and the, the issues and making sure everybody was safe. So I was just waiting to see whenever it was safe to play football, whatever that decision was going to be, I was going to accept it and kind of move forward. Luckily for me, I mean, I, I felt I was always ready to go. Always. I was always checking on my teammates, making sure they stay locked in as well, and just making sure that we, we stay on our P's and Q's. We make sure we're still watching a little bit of film, making sure we're still keeping our minds fresh for whenever that time comes. But, I mean, I was ready to go whenever. It was just whenever we got the call, I was just excited. It was like, Let's, it's time to play ball. Next question is from Julian Minnison from uh, KZI. Hey, Verone, um, you talked about watching college football and having a little bit more time to do that um, during this time. Uh, what's been your biggest takeaway from watching other teams play that maybe you can take into fall camp, maybe big mistakes that you've seen spe specifically defensively? Um, I mean, everybody's scheme is a little different. And just kind of with that time off, you can tell people have had time off. So something we've emphasized a lot around here is just making sure that we're, we're doing our fundamentals. We have the fundamentals down packed, so that should not be an issue. And just taking care of the little things, the little details within the defense, whether that's a drop, whether that's a your hand needs to be here to get off of a block or something like that, making sure we take care of the little details. Because for the most part, everybody understands the scheme. We understand the big picture, but it's the little things that make sure that every little TD tiny thing is, is fixed. So, Next question, Tyson Alger from The Athletic. Yeah, I think he's muted. <laughs> what what's what do we not understand about how hard it is for what Daywood Davis has done in his career going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth? Being able to flip your mind to go from offense to defense and then just going forwards at one point and going backwards at one point. But I mean Day was done a great job. Um I'm I'm close with him off the field and he's just focused and he wants to keep getting better on whatever side. It's a, a guy that's selfless. He's just truly selfless because he has to sometimes play offense, sometimes he has to play defense, but he does whatever to make the team better. So I commend him. Final question today is from uh, James Capi at the Oregonian. Right, I, I understandably all our questions so far have been about football, but I know you were one of the players who was uh certainly outspoken during this off season a lot with the social justice and things on campus, things going on in the world. Um, you were part of the We Are United movement. I mean, basically the whole Pac-12 was. What is your feeling of things? Uh, obviously, you were always appreciative of, of what was going on at Oregon. There was no complaints about the program or the protocols that were in place before or, or now. But are you, for lack of a better word, satisfied or, or whatever, and you, your peers um, within the your, We Are United movement as to where things stand at this point? 
Uh, for me, when the We Are United stuff came out, I, I mean, I was just supporting my brothers who wanted to make a change and make a difference. Um, with everything, with the social injustice and everything like that, I mean, it's never truly going to be solved. And it's always going to be, we're always going to have to keep working on it. It's something that's going to have to be worked on every single day. But, I mean, I understood. I, I know it's good to have those conversations and continue to educate yourself. Um, I also think just with the, the COVID protocols, I mean, we all want to play football. We just want to do it safely. So we now have the testing. We have everything that we need to in order to play safely. So, I mean, we've done a great job. Uh, I come in the Pac-12 um, here at Oregon specifically. We've had great protocol. We haven't had really any issues. So just making sure that we social distance, wear our mask, wash our hands, and just take care of the protocols and everything's good.